If a tree falls in the forest, you reckon that makes it a drum? Well, welcome back to Diddles and Beats, the part of this channel where I answer all of your drumming questions. But before I start answering your questions, I've got a question for you. What do you do to get prepared to record yourself playing, whether it be in your own practice space or in a studio? Put it in the comments section below and let's start a conversation about it. On YouTube, Dodd TBDM asks, I don't know if you've ever had this problem, but when I record myself playing, I can't seem to play anything right just because I know the camera's recording. Cue the tiny drum box. What you're talking about is red light syndrome. And yes, I've experienced it, you've experienced it, almost everyone watching this video has experienced it, every professional that's ever recorded in a studio has experienced it. I'm telling you, it's just human nature. But to quote G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. So as long as we know it's a problem, we can go about fixing it. Here's three tips that I use to help me get over red light syndrome. Number one, record your practice time. I know for myself, whenever I go in for a practice time, I'll practice two, three, four hours at a time. And so what I need to do is not only practice my drumming, I need to replicate that recording environment. I need to practice recording. So the way you can do that is simply turn the camera on while you're practicing. Now, as soon as you get done, you don't necessarily have to watch the video, you can delete it. The thing we're practicing is knowing that that red light on the camera is on and we are actually being recorded for everyone to maybe see if we chose that. The second thing is have a plan. Now, hear me out. We need to leave room for ourselves to be creative, but schedule out a time to be creative for what you'll be recording. Mark out some fills, some grooves that you like, and then notate and remember those creative things that you came up with so that when you get into a stressful environment like the studio or recording yourself in your own home practice studio, you're not gonna freak out. You'll have somewhat of a plan. Let me give you two examples of coming up with a very quick plan under pressure cooker situations. I was on a demo session here in Nashville. We were recording four or five songs in the span of about three or four hours, as well as anything else the client wanted. Now, after we cut a couple tracks, they told me, okay, now we just need to do a drum take. They were needing some drums to put behind a commercial. So I asked the client, I said, what did you have in mind? And they said, something fast with some drums and some cymbals. Now with that little bit of direction, I went back into the drum room, sat down, and was now staring at the engineer as well as all the other musicians huddled around drinking their coffee, looking through the glass at me, waiting for me to do something fast with drums and cymbals. The engineer comes over to talk back mic and he says, you wanna do that with a click? <laughs> sure, why not, doesn't matter. Okay, what BPM you want that at? 120? So in that moment, I very quickly had to come up with a plan. I had to chart out in my head right before we cut that, okay, I'm gonna do this, I'll go into this section, and then I'll come out. Maybe they'll like it. And so at 120 BPM, I went into a tom groove with some cymbals, and at the end of it, they loved it. Situation number two was when I was working with a Christian songwriter, and I asked her about this certain song. I was having a little trouble understanding the direction that she wanted to go. I said, do you have any certain direction that you're wanting to go with this? And she said, I just want the drums to be prayerful. <laughs> well, I forgot my prayer drum back at my studio. So I sat down at the drums and had to figure out very quickly and plan a prayerful drum part. It would have been a disaster though if they had pressed record and I didn't have some sort of a plan going into it of what I wanted to do. And let me reiterate, there's always room for creativity, but I have to realize at times what the project is for. 99.9% .9 of the time, we are not recording a Love Supreme. Coltrane is not in the other room. I am not Elvin Jones. So if I'm recording a commercial jingle or a demo for a songwriter, I need to understand my role and come up with a part that will suit that so that when I get into the recording process, I can work on accuracy and making sure that track is as good and clean as it can be. And my third tip would be warm up. Mentally and physically, I play so much better when I'm warmed up. Get to the studio 10 to 15 minutes early, take the time, warm up. I have a couple of short warm up routines that I go through that not only gets me physically warmed up, but focuses me mentally so that I can get prepared for that session that I'm about to do. Well, that wraps up this week's edition of Diddles and Beats. You can follow the links to my left and hang out with me on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Get your free video lesson download 30 Days to Better Doubles by following the link below in the video description. If you're wanting to improve your drumming, you may be interested in a student membership. The link is below this video in the description. You can take a tour of the student area and see what all the website has to offer. But regardless, I'll see you here in the next video. Uh...